these things need to be better. So, I wanted to find out more about mainstream menstrual products and where they came from, and who was responsible for them. I'm Arizona O'Neill, a filmmaker in Montreal. It turns out they're a fairly new invention. Women were alone for centuries, actually millennia. Before the 1900s, they were using homemade products they found around the house. They made their own reusable pads out of a cotton fabric found in baby diapers. They would pin these to their underwear and wash them in between cycles. Tampax advertisements in the 90s actually referenced these women in a not so tasteful way. I figure if we're old enough to menstruate, we're too old to wear diapers. These homemade pads were difficult to use, however, because most of women's underwear at the time were crotchless. Dresses had huge layers and crotchless underwear made going to the washroom easier. At the time, there were few products you could buy to help with your period. I've seen ads in 1920s catalogs for what they were calling sanitary aprons. These plastic aprons were worn backwards to stop blood from getting on the back of women's dresses. But it was badly designed and it led to blood running down the back of women's legs. Totally useless. Johnson & Johnson also tried to develop a pad in 1897 that would be sold in stores, but it didn't take off. They were ahead of their time. All the products for women's periods were only sold in catalogs. You couldn't get them at a store, which was a huge inconvenience for women. Imagine something that one fourth of the population was experiencing and nothing available. Wild. This all changed in World War I. In World War I, everything changed for women in the workforce. Women participated in the war as nurses, and men left the factory for the battlefield, leaving their positions open for women. Before this, when women had their periods, they would stay home. But now with their new factory jobs, they had to be a functioning member of society, even with their periods. This might be why companies started to pay attention to them. Women were now consumers. Also during World War I, there was a lot of blood that needed to be soaked up. The men were bleeding too. It was around then that the French nurses realized that the bandages they had been using on the wounded soldiers were much more absorbent than the plain old cotton they had been using at home when they menstruated. This new, highly absorbent material is called cellucotton. Kimberly Clark, a big American company most known for its paper products, invented cellucotton. They created it to be an affordable way to dress wounds on the battlefield. It was inexpensive and incredibly absorbent. The nurses on the front line soon saw the potential for cellucotton to be used on their own periods. I like to picture these nurses in their medical tents, complaining that the products for the bleeding man on the cot are better than the ones available for their monthly bleed. I like to imagine that the pressures of warfare made them feel powerful and independent. That when they used the cellucotton on themselves for the first time, they felt like they were finally taking their destiny into their own hands. I love these women. After the war, Kimberly Clark was left with a surplus of cellucotton and no idea what to do with it. At the time, the American Fund for French Wounded, a relief organization started by women, started to receive letters from nurses saying that cellucotton was so useful for their periods at the front. The American Fund approached Kimberly Clark with what they've been hearing from the nurses, but Kimberly Clark felt that sanitary napkins were too personal to be advertised and therefore could never be a profitable product. Johnson & Johnson, after all, had failed at getting their pad to take off. But still, they had so much jelly cotton and had no idea what to do with it. So they did two things. First, they created a brand, Kotex. You might have heard of it. Secondly, they advertise in innovative ways. The ads told women to ask for it by name, that way avoiding the awkwardness of saying sanitary pads. They later created a very popular ad campaign of women wearing fitted gowns to show you couldn't see their pads. 
not a shadow of a doubt, with Kotex. Even though it is men who benefited financially, women finally had a product available for them. So in 1921, disposable sanitary napkins were finally on the market. These were held up by sanitary belts that went around our hips. It took until the 1980s to eventually make the bottom sticky, but the pads themselves are not far from the ones we still use today. This is now considered a high-tech invention that was groundbreaking. But is it really a great invention if it took that long to create a piece of material for one's underwear? Personally, I would think that after millennia of women having their period, even better products would be available. Pads are bulky, uncomfortable, and cause irritation throughout the day. And let's be honest, they're still just diapers. Which brings me to tampons. The first tampons were produced by a businesswoman named Gertrude Tendrich. She founded Tampex in 1933, making the first tampons on her sewing machine. All these years later, the basics of tampons haven't really changed. My problem with them is they're uncomfortable and sometimes painful, and the sizing of them is arbitrary and kind of useless. Then there are the Diva Cups, also invented in the 30s, but did not become popular until much later. These two have their problems. They're not exactly easy to put in and out without making a mess. And I don't know that many people who use them. These three products, invented almost 100 years ago, are practically the same we still use today. And personally, I hate them all. Menstruation, for as long as we can remember, has been a taboo subject. I was 12 when I got my first period, a bit on the young side making me the only girl in my class who had it. I went to an all-girls school, so you would think that the shame there would be not as bad. But a girl in my class went to my bag looking for a pencil and found a tampon and gas. She came over to me, handing me the tampon, whispering that I should be more careful to hide my tampons next time. I was mortified. For the next few days, all the girls would gather together and laugh as I walked by. How absurd. It should never be an embarrassing experience. It needs to be something that we can talk about. Because when we voice our concern, better products become available. Ugh, it will never be an enjoyable experience, but with the innovation happening in the world today, maybe we could get something better. For CBC, the Creator Network, I'm Arizona O'Neill. Oh, here's a fun fact. In 1985, Courtney Cox was the first person to say period in a TV commercial. <laughs>